Hey there. I have a marker haul for you today. There it is. That's it. That's the haul. Bye! Have a good day! Just kidding. Not sure why, but I seem to like throwing markers a lot. I guess I find it funny. Who knows? So as you can see... Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, I have a variety of markers to show you today. Exciting. So I got some packs of markers, and I got I got some loose markers too that I bought in open stock. Fun. So I got art alternative markers. Got a, got a couple of these. I got some chart packs, add markers, and I got some loose artist loft ones. Got what five? Almost couldn't count. And then I have a box of them. Couldn't Gotta remember the word box. It's great. It's going well. Got some Spectrum Noir. Got some Chameleon. Got some Blick. Illustrator ones, not the studio ones. And we got, oh, of course. Of course, it's upside down. Oh no, I knocked over my mic. The hell's wrong with me? Anyway, we got some Windsor and Newton ones. And we got, we got these little guys. Got two, uh, Windsor and Newton brush markers. Yeah, all black in a blender. I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. So yeah. These. Those. You got, you got these. You got these. Uh, and then these. Yep. And, uh, yeah, okay then. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna... I forget about those for right now. We're gonna go over these. Not these. These. And these. I did some serious expert investigation work to realize these markers are sh- <coughs> Whoops. Oh, sorry, I can't say that on YouTube. These markers are shit. But you might be wondering, how do I know that? How do I know that they are the bad word? Isn't this a haul? Shouldn't all these be new to me? Well, dear viewer, they're not. Some of these I've gotten months ago, and did nothing with them. I was planning on doing this haul video months ago, but I didn't. And guess what? I also kept fucking up my recordings and had to re-record many, many times. So these markers certainly aren't new to me. But don't tell past me that. It's a secret. They're not new to me, but they're new to you, and that's all that matters. Yeah. Let's just take a deep dive and just go through these. Why do I keep throwing them? What is wrong with me today? So, uh, where do I start? Hmm. Let's look at these first since they're already out. So I have art alternatives. I got six of these, I believe. And then I have some artist lofts, five loose ones six of them in a case. Got the bright pack, dual tip sketch markers. Professional quality. Mm -hmm. Alcohol based ink markers. Ooh. And then I got the pack of Blick illustrator markers. 12 pack. Let's take a good look at those colors. Mm-hmm. Oh, how curious. Those are, these are the blicks and, and, and these are the uh, art alternatives. Yeah, if you mix them up a bit, they look, uh, they look really similar. Curious that. Hmm. You know what? Since we're here, we're just gonna open these and spill them out too because that's funny. It's, it's funny. So we just got, Three different, different types of markers all just spilled out here. All right, there are some important markers I wanna pick out of this bunch. Let's see, got Art Alternatives Mint BG14. Oh, a Blick Illustrator marker, uh, Mint BG14. Mm -hmm. A Red Rose R11 Artist Loft, and 
around. You're probably wondering why I'm calling out the names. Well, you'll, uh, you'll figure it out if you haven't already. And then I got a uh, Art Alternatives E15 Pale Paint. A uh, Art Alternatives Red Rose R11. Hmm, that sounds familiar. And then we got a uh, Blick Illustrator Marker Red, wa Red Rose <laughs> R11 again. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. E15 Pale Pink Artist Loft. And... Oh, oh, I almost forgot. Pale pink E15 Blick Illustrator. All right, so we're gonna take out, we're gonna take out our reds, and we're gonna take out our pale pinks. Let's take a look. That we got our 11 red rose and E15 pale pink. Hmm, strange. It's like they're almost the same marker. Strange. And even stranger, the pack of 12 Blicks, and then the pack of 12 for the Art Alternative Markers had the um, same marker colors in them, in both of them. And the packs also look eerily similar. I saw all that in the stores and I just had to investigate further. Let's check out the nibs. Let's check out the nibs. Let's see. So I'll just out artist off the uh, E15 pale pink. So we got chisel nib and brush nib. Chisel, brush, blick illustrator, brush, chisel. And then art alternatives, brush and chisel. Let's take a look at the brush nibs all together, shall we? Here they are. Okay. So the colors look a teeny bit different. But the nibs all look eerily similar. Very similar. Now that might not mean much, but let's take a look at other markers. Other markers, real quick. Real quick. Got these three markers. I got a Copic Chow, Blick Studio, and Prismacolor. And they are brush tips. They do, they do look a little similar. However, they are all a little bit different. Copic Chow is a little thinner. Nice little point to it. Blick Studio, a little bit dueler point. And then Prismacolor is long and thick. Ooh. So they are brush nibs, they look similar, but not there, there's still some differences, you can tell. Unlike these, which uh, seem to have the same point and the same length just about. Interesting. Let's do some, let's do some swatches. Swatches are done. They don't look exactly alike, like I expected, but the colors are still really similar though, especially the red rose. Granted, the blick is a little bit of a warmer red, then Art Alternatives and Artist Loft, but still pretty similar. Up here, the, uh, don't know if you can tell on the camera, but the Art, Art, Art Alternative is a little bit pinker than these two. So not exactly alike, but, uh, still pretty similar. Now the feel of the nibs, it's almost exactly alike. Stiff and lifeless. This right here is Art Alternative. Red Rose. R11. As you can see, not a whole lot of movement on these nibs. I have to press really hard to get it to bend. Really don't want to bend markers like that. Don't want to force them. So the only thing that really bends is just the very, very tip of the art alternatives. And the same applies to the blicks. Same thing. Really stiff. Only thing that really bends very top of the nib. Now, the artist loft nibs were actually a little bit different, which surprised me. So they feel a little bit different, as you can tell, hopefully. They are a little bit more flexible. They are still a little stiff, but the top bends a whole lot more. I don't really have to force it to bend also it just feels different when you color with it. Almost reminds me of the Prismacolor, the way those feel. 
Yeah, yeah, they do feel similar. New color with them. Now the flexibility of your nibs is really up to personal taste on what you prefer. However, I think the stiffness of these two markers in particular is what leads the uh, tips of them to fray really bad. And it turns them into this. Look at that. That is bad. Granted, I bought it. I bought it this way. I realized that days after I bought it. Oh, hey, it's flexible now. <laughs> it's pretty much unusable in the state at this point. Jeez, look at that. Whoa, what did I do? <laughs> so maybe that's not the fairest comparison in the world because I haven't used this one and I bought it like this. So something went wrong with it. Something. However, I do have two that I actually used in drawings that didn't fare too well. These are both Blick markers, the mint and the black. Now I used the black during Inktober. Yeah, I've had these markers for that long. So I used this black during Inktober and I only used it on a few drawings and the tip started to flare out a little bit. You can kind of see just a teeny bit at the top. But the biggest problem was is that it dried out real quick. And I only used it on a few drawings. And pretty much completely dried out. And as for the mint, I used this one for my Celebi drawing. Didn't dry out, but uh it's seen better days. The tip, a little flared out, and then the nib almost looks shredded. It gets pulling up in places where it really shouldn't. Kind of see it right there. And it's not like I used it on like really rough watercolor paper or anything like that. So the paper wasn't the reason the nibs look, uh, look like crap after light use from one or two drawings. So I think since the nibs are so stiff and the only place it really bends is at the top, it just compromises the nibs and it makes it easier for them to flare out or just get shredded from really light use. As you can see, it's this one's a little more bendy than the other two, but it's still just the top. The top is just flaring out a whole lot more than it should. So they probably won't end up like this one from light regular use. But who knows? Maybe they will. So, we're at the end of my investigation. Why are these markers so similar? Especially these two? I... I don't know. I don't know. The Blicks were made in... Well, a couple places. The ink was made in Korea, nibs made in Japan, and assembled in China. I don't have a box for art of art art alternatives but I did look it up and it only says they're made in China same thing goes for artist loft which honestly doesn't mean much I'm honestly wondering if they came from the same manufacturer especially these two because they're just way too similar way too similar to not have come from the same place not too sure about this one because it is a little bit different the ink does look similar to the other ones but the nibs are a little bit different and obviously the barrels different too but they all they all have the same names and codes on them which is weird hmm so that's all I got I'm recording this for the fifth time I think let's look at some uh, chart pack markers chart pack ad markers I have two chrome orange and Pale flesh. Yummy. So these markers... <laughs> they stink. So bad. Um, oh, I'm uh, really sensitive to smell, so um, I sure as shit aren't... Um, no, I sure as shit ain't using these. Never. Nope. Uh-uh. So this is the uh, fine tip point. Fine tip. Sure, whatever. Apparently they're solvent based. So if I uh, actually read the uh, description before I bought them, I, I would have known that they would have smelled really bad. If only I, uh, 
If only I read. Let's do some swatches. Ugh, this just feels awful. I know from past experience I'm gonna have to take this swatch paper out of my room. Or it'll make my whole room stink. So the nib, very hard. Rock solid, in fact. I guess that's a fine enough point. Um, um. Oh, God, finish the swatches before they kill me. Ugh. Pale flesh now. My flesh is about to turn pale. More than it already is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wanna know what's even worse than the smell? These markers are known to the state of California to cause cancer. Did you like that bit? I hope so. That's like fourth or fifth time I did it. At this rate, I am gonna give myself cancer. Windsor and Newton time. Let's go ahead and open these bad boys up. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a fancy box. Mm. Oh. Aha, so here they all are. This is the pack of 12. Got this on the Blick website on sale. Let's take a few out. Let's see what I wanna do. What do I wanna do? Oh, we're definitely gonna have to use this white blender because that sounds interesting. I'll try blending some of them, so I'll take orange, scarlet, and I guess yellow as well. I'm just gonna use these, make some swatches of them, and I guess I'll just use my trusty hammer mill paper to do some swatches on. Should be fine, right? Yeah. Scarlet. It has a chisel nib. And a bullet nib. And a bullet nib. There it is. Apparently the lids are two different sizes and shapes. Didn't even realize. All right. So no brush nib on these. Which I suppose is fine. I won't cry about it. So that sure does feel weird. Almost feels like it's eating through the paper a little bit. Almost as if they were um, water-based markers, like the ones kids usually use. That's peculiar. So first pass, feels fine. Then I do a second one, and another one. Feels strange. Very strange. All right, well, let's try to blend them then, huh? So we'll start with red, and orange, then yellow. Hmm. Well, I guess these two colors aren't aren't that similar. So let's try again with different colors. Yeah. Let's do it really quick this time. Yeah. And nothing. Uh, try again. White, white. Let, let's let's put the blending white on it. Um. Oh, that just that just looks a mess. For best results, use with the uh, Windsor and Newton pigment marker paper range. Two thousand years later. Got the right paper. Now, before you yell at me and be all like, Ooh, Pie Viper, if you just read it, you, you'd know. You'd know that you didn't have the right paper. And you know what? You are right. I did know. I knew. Months ago. I figured it out when I bought these markers. I was just doing a little funny haha -ha bit. Just, just funny. A little, little bit. A little funny bit. I, uh, made myself look stupid 
just for you. Though, to be honest, that was a pretty accurate reenactment of my uh, original realization, so I am actually still stupid. And I wanna know, wanna know something else that makes me, uh, really stupid. This is the, uh, second time I'm recording this because I, uh, deleted all of my footage. All of it. So, let's just, let's just test out the markers on this paper. So it's, uh, Winsor Newton. Pigment marker, smooth coated marker paper, ideal for blending and color vibrancy. It has 50 sheets in it, and the paper is a bit flimsy. It's a little bit flimsy. I usually like my marker paper thick and sturdy. Very thick. This is the exact opposite of what I like. But you know what? It, it maybe maybe it'll go well. It's just take a sheet of this out. So let's try these markers on this paper. Hopefully it all goes much better than expected. This is new for me. I've had this paper and these markers for months, but I, I haven't tried them on this paper. I've been waiting till now. So let's, let's uh, see how this goes. Hopefully it goes well, because I honestly have no idea how it's uh, going to go at all. Swatch time. Here we go. I guess I'll do the rows first. And... Stop! No! What you're supposed to do is use the right side of the paper, you big dummy! Now I have to re-record that whole Windsor and Newton section! Again! For a third time! <sighs> okay. I will do it the right way this time. As you can see, I already tested it out to uh, confirm my suspicions. I noticed it this morning when I was looking at this paper and I was gonna throw it away and then I felt, I felt the paper and I'm like, oh, that feels weird. And I felt the other side and uh, this side. This side is the coated side. This side isn't. But I'll, I'll test them out the right way. Again, just for you. Start with the scarlet. So I'll just build up some layers. So I did that last time and I warped the paper, but that was on the wrong side. No warping at all. Though it does seem to stay wet longer. I'm gonna smear it on purpose, let's see. Yes. So since the paper is coated, the ink doesn't seep into the paper. And it'll stay wetter longer, so you gotta be careful. You'll uh, end up smearing it if you don't give it enough time to dry. And let's try blending. So I'll do some scarlet, do some orange. Also the markers feel much- oh no, Ah. How did I even do that? just nicked it on the side of the cap. That shouldn't happen. I've never had that happen before with any marker I've ever used and I have accidentally nicked markers on the side of the lid. Well that, that was exciting. Let's, let's hopefully this is, is this dry? No, it's good. See, look at that. The yellow's pushing that orange around. They're blending together. Look at that. So much better than before. I'll even take the yellow further into the orange and the red. Why not? And look, yellow re-wet the red and is now pushing the red around, turning orange. How lovely. How lovely. It's so nice when markers work, especially when you use them the right way. Use the right side of the paper. It's always great. And let's pop in some white. Just because, why not? Oh, look at that. How lovely. The markers are actually working as intended. Amazing things happen when you use the right side of the paper. Amazing things. Let's take the white and go over this red, too. Oh, look at that. 
It's just re-wetting that red and just blending it out, making a nice salmon color. So, my impressions of these markers now is far more positive now that I'm using the right side of the paper. This is much better, more impressive, though I have noticed, I don't know if you can tell, can you tell? Probably on this camera, that the paper is starting to warp upwards with all the ink and wetness I put on it. Now it's not warping nearly as bad as it did when I put it on the wrong side. The, the paper crinkled up on the other side. For this, the paper is just gradually, gradually, oh, that's a word I can't say, just lifting up from all the liquid, moisture, wetness, whatever you want to say. So my comments about this paper being flimsy and thin still apply. It would be nice if this paper was a little bit thicker. But the paper does what it's supposed to. It's a nice surface for these markers. And it's probably one of the only surfaces these markers can work on. Which I wouldn't consider a plus considering you can use alcohol markers on a variety of different papers. Whereas these pigment markers, from what I've tested out, can only really be used properly on this paper. I think that's all I have to say for this. I'll be curious to actually use these for a full artwork. I'm not doing in that in this video because this video is already way too long. And I already had to re-record like five times already. And yeah. Enjoy, enjoy the next part of the video. I don't even know what it's going to be at this point. I probably have to re-record that again too. Well, you know what? We're gonna gonna keep on going with Windsor and Newton because I got these, these two, that were ruined because they were in a package before. But I took them out of the package, and all that footage, it's gone now, all gone. So you don't get the excitement of unboxing these. They're just they're just here now. So this is the brush marker, Windsor and Newton, got a blender, brush tip, a chisel tip, and then the other one is just black the brush tip and the chisel let's do some swatches of these two I was gonna say two colors but there's only one color and then a blender black marker first check out that brush tip oh silky smooth and flexible this isn't a surprise for me by the way so I already used this in the uh, footage that is long gone and deleted but these markers feel nice the tip is really flexible look at that so nice and bendy so nice so nice and it feels so soft too it's like butter I just want to keep on I just want to keep on coloring this because this feels very nice it is the best feeling marker I felt for this whole haul it's just lovely. Whip out the blender too, I guess. Why not? Hey, let's swatch the blender. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Let's blend out that black a little bit. I might be too dry by now. Eh, it's doing a little bit. Doing a teeny bit. Okay, so I only got two more left. I got... Spectrum Noir and Chameleon. Let's just do the Spectrum Noir really quick. I'm not gonna really talk about these all too much. I guess I should show the box first. So I got Illustrator by Stru Spectrum Noir Twin Tip Artist Markers. And I got the Tones pack. I think I got these from Blick. This was the only pack they had left. A lot of them were sold out when I bought them. And they had tones, so I just bought the tones. It comes with six different colors. Here in the back. They come in this little plastic tray. Oh, I wanted all of them to come out at once. They didn't. So I got pink lace, wisteria, vintage pink, old lavender, vintage blue, 
smoky blue. Lovely. Let's just take a look at the barrel. It's um hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Are six sides hexagons? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> How embarrassing. So it's a very interesting barrel. It's actually really nice, so if you just throw it, that, that thing's not going anywhere. So it's not like a rounded or an oval barrel. It's just, it's just gonna sit there. It's gonna move. So that's appreciated. So let's just look at the nibs real quick. Bullet nib and brush nib. Just swatch them quick. This is smoky blue. Now these markers do feel nice. I don't know if they feel as nice as the Winsor Newton brush markers that I was using. Now I've already used these markers a little bit before in another drawing. I think it was my Sylveon drawing that I did. I used this one actually. Pink lace. There we go. I used this one for the Sylveon drawing. I haven't used any of the other ones though. Well, I will say something that I've noticed with these, with the swatches and when I used it on Sylveon, is that the color laydown looks a little strange. It has a weird marble texture on it. I don't know if it's just the hammer mill paper or if it's the markers themselves. Yeah, you can see that marbling texture a little bit. Actually, you can see it a lot in the smoky blue. And you can't see that in any of the other colors. It could just be that the inks in these and the hammer mill paper aren't really cooperating with each other all that well. Maybe I'll have better luck if I use the um, Smooth Bristol, which is the other paper I use for markers. Or maybe not. Let's just finish this. Uh, yeah, I'll just use this side. Let's let's do the chameleon markers and just finish this off already. It's about that time. I'm done. I'm done with this marker haul. I've been wanting to do this marker haul for months, and I either messed up my recording or just deleted the whole thing and I redo it. So you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Let's just go for it. Last ones. Chameleon markers. These are basically the fancy artist version of blendy pens. So I got the set of five primary tones, got them on Amazon for pretty cheap. And the first thing you'll notice is that these markers are huge. So they come in two parts, they come in the marker part and in the mixing chamber. Summer sun, royal blue, crimson red, grass green, and then just the black. And the box comes with a couple things. It comes with extra nibs. So it has two brush, spare brush nibs in here. That's nice. That's the first time I've ever seen something like that. Usually marker boxes don't come with extra nibs. And then it also comes with directions in multiple languages. That that one's in English and this one's in a bunch of other languages that I cannot read. So it shows you how to use them in here, how to use the mixing chamber and all that. So you can go from zero to 35 seconds. Which I don't, I don't see how that's very practical. But you can wait that long if you want to, if you want your drawing to just take forever. This part is the mixing chamber, we're just gonna take that off. Then here is the actual marker itself, so it's not that much bigger than your standard marker. The barrel does feel a bit thicker though. So we got a bullet nib here on this side. Then this brush nib is really really weird. I have never seen a brush nib like this before. It's very small. I don't know. Uh, it might take a while to color in things if you have a bigger piece that you're working on. And I know in the directions it said that the tips are supposed to flare out just a teeny bit at the top so it's almost like you're brushing with a little little paintbrush. Let's do some swatches then. So this is blue. As yes, yeah, blue. Who cares? Who cares what the actual name is? So yeah, nib really small, really small, and not very flexible, which is fine. It's fine. It, like I said before, it's all personal taste. Though it does feel nice coloring with it. it feels quite nice. 
I guess I'll swatch the yellow. I'm only gonna swatch these two because I'm a, I'm a done. I'm a done. I'm totally done. 110% done. So we'll swatch the yellow. And then we'll do a swatch with the mixing chamber. So how you use this mixing chamber, and I'm gonna use it right this time because last time I recorded this, I didn't use it right. You're gonna take the brush tip, take it, the cap off, you're gonna take the mixing chamber, you're gonna stick the two together, and you're gonna hold it like this. So like this. I'm gonna make sure the marker is facing downward. So the ink can drain. Oh no. I did it wrong again. <laughs> I messed up and <laughs> forget everything I just said. You're not supposed to do it like that. You want to make sure the marker tip is facing upward and the blend the uh, the mixing chamber is facing down cuz you want you want the alcohol in the blending chamber to go down and Marker. I can't believe I did that again. After I was just saying that, oh, I know how to, I'm gonna do it right this time. Apparently not. Apparently not. So now I gotta sit here and wait. Okay, all the ink is starting to drain back into, into the marker. I said I wanted to do this quickly. Look at that, I'm not. I don't even know how long I've been sitting here with this marker like this. It's, it's long enough. Hopefully you can see it on camera, but it's gonna look a little bit lighter at the top. See, look at that. It looks a little lighter, and then it's darker at the bottom. All right, let's do, let's do a little switch. Little switch, switch, swatch. Mm, very light. I guess I let it stay in quite a while. Maybe a little too long. Maybe a little too long. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's still going. Uh, nope, it's still getting darker. What have I done? What have I done? This is supposed to be this is supposed to be shorter. This this is supposed to be short and sweet, and I messed it up. Uh huh. Okay. So I think we're good now. I don't know how long I held it like that, but you got quite a lot of range from it. Now, like I was saying, I don't know how practical this is. Cause if you want like the lightest blue right here. You're not gonna have very long with it until it starts to transition into a darker color. So you're only gonna have like... A, well, you're gonna have a bunch of passes, but I don't know if it'll be long enough, especially if you're filling in something that's a little bit bigger, and if you want this particular color. I highly doubt you'll be able to fill it all in before it starts to transition to something else, so then you have to stop, stick it back in the, the mixing chamber, and hold it up the right way. And then wait a bunch. Probably have to wait a while if you want a really light, light color. Repeat it all over again until you fill that in. So yeah, I don't know how practical this is. I mean, it's a neat idea. I don't know if I'm gonna use these. I don't know if I'm gonna use any of these markers. <laughs> oh, I spent so much money. <laughs> At least I use them for the haul vid. That <laughs> I won't get any money from me there. I just say I would swatch the yellow. I did that swatch. Let me just do. Let me do. Let me do another one, and then we're then we'll be done. We'll be done. I recorded this for forty minutes. How long is this video gonna be? Okay, let's put it in right. It's it's in right this time. It's in right. Th so we're just gonna sit here and chill for I don't know. Maybe not as long. A few more seconds, I guess. Okay, should be good. Oh, that's really light. Okay, it's starting to transition faster. So I didn't hold it for so long. Okay, so you can see what it does when you don't hold it forever. You have less time with a lighter color transition a lot quicker than uh, this so if you hold it for a couple seconds you're you're 
gonna get an even more limited range and a limited amount of time. So again, not sure how practical these are, but they look cool. So there's that. Okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. It's all, all the markers, all the them, all the markers. Markers, 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 and markers. Uh huh. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know how long it's going to be. If you watched it the whole way, that's impressive. Good job. Very good job. I'm sorry. I don't know how to end this. So I'm not.